Switching art mediums and creative preferences can be trivial for a lot of people. For others, the shift can be drastic, while some may take longer veering away in an attempt to avoid making mistakes. Our guest artist knows exactly what that feeling is like and how you can align your purpose by switching lanes and embracing imperfections. Mixed media art and art journaling have taught her to embrace impermanence and to celebrate the freedom of creating without restrictions. Learn more about Karen and her story in this episode as we talked about the difference between scrapbooking and art journaling, art as a tool to safeguard our well-being, why it's okay to shift and switch passions in art, finding balance in your mixed media composition, and embracing imperfections and finding freedom to create. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Karen, thank you so much for joining me here on Make More Art, the podcast. I'm super excited for this episode because I know it's going to be packed with a lot of golden nuggets, especially for a seasoned artist like yourself. So before we dive into that, can you share a little bit more about your journey, how you started, how did you end up venturing into multimedia arts and take us through your creative journey? Hi, Jesse. Yes, um, I I actually have always been creating. I remember as a kid, always creating, always doodling in my notebooks. I've tried many different types of art, like over the years. I did painting when I was younger, like whether it was like acrylics, watercolors. Um, I took classes on acrylic uh, paintings, but and I even did sculpting. Uh, but honestly... Um, I could never connect to any of them. Like I found them very restricting and I would take like the classes and then I would just like quit after a while because what I like is creating. And um, in 2003, when I, my, I mean, my son was about two years old, somebody actually uh, told me about something called scrapbooking, which I had never heard of before. Or I mean, I heard of, but it was like very just, kind of starting around then and I really loved it I went to some classes and I wanted to you know I took my son's pictures and I started putting them into these beautiful like made almost like paper like pages like almost like art and for me that really changed everything because I really love doing that and I started basically just doing that for myself and around 2010 so like about seven years later mm -hmm. I realized that some people like I was following like blogs and different things online and others for other scrapbookers and I realized oh I could start a blog and kind of go through the journey of of like how I created because I was just doing it all the time with my friends. We would go to crops and different things. So I started um, a blog and that led me to start uh, doing challenges for different companies because I wanted to get free products from them. So okay. I would just like, yeah. So I would just like kind of do like a, a layout with this. That's what you call in scrapbooking. I would lay out and then I like, you know, hand it into this challenge or this like thing. And then they would like, if you win, you got a bunch of products, which was great because then I wouldn't have to pay for them. And that led me to actually not only like do the challenges, but actually apply to be part of their design team where they would send you their actual all the products for a certain release that they would have and you would create for them and keep the product. So, so that, that's how I started this. And that one specific company that I started with, they started going a little bit into mixed media, like their product mm -hmm. line and everything started to go into mixed media. And I really loved it because I started combining all these like products, like wet mediums, things like gesso and modeling paste and stencils and even watercolors and different paints and things. I started incorporating into these pages and they started becoming these like almost mini works of art. And I continued doing that. And 
started getting also into oh and I then that's when I actually opened also my YouTube channel I started my YouTube channel started just I said oh let's just let's see if anybody will watch these videos where I'm teaching how to do scrapbooking because by then I was doing it almost for it was 2013 so this was like 10 years later right so so I'm like oh let's see if they like it and and I started doing like mixed media videos and art journaling videos and and I basically taught myself and and if, and then I also and then, and then I started art journaling, which is where I am today. Mixed media art journaling—that's my passion. I actually completely in 2007, no, 2020. After 17 years, I quit scrapbooking. After all those years, oh. I'm not doing it anymore. I actually made a video about that. That I was mm-hmm. just like it wasn't my passion anymore. Mm-hmm. And mixed media was it and how that happened is that specifically our journaling and mixed media because what our journaling taught me is that I could I was able to tell my story through art I was able to journal through the art and that is what I want to teach others is to be able to tell your story through art and when I mean your story it's not like you're telling a chronological story but you're actually uh, telling like you're, you're expressing yourself and putting your heart and soul, your emotions, your everything that you are doing, whether it is technique or whether it is actually that's something you're feeling into a book. And then you can look through the book and you can see your journey and they almost like, it's almost like a story. So that's my passion now. And that's where I am, but it started from something that you would never think of. And I call myself a self self self-taught mixed media artist, but honestly, like every single step kind of you know, build on this, build on this journey. So, yeah. I love that you shared that part of the story of how everything started for you. I mean, normally you would hear people that, you know, they study, they attended a workshop and we've had several artists here on the show as well, who said that they have always been creative as a kid. You did mention that you've tried different mediums and even studied acrylic, but it wasn't really your passion because you love to yeah. create with your hands. And, uh, over the years, it, you're absolutely right. You, it, it built on it. And then I also want to tap on when you said that after 17 years, was it? 17 years of scrapbooking, you've made a decision to switch and change your passion to art journaling because now you have a different mission and that is for to inspire others to tell their stories through mixed media. That aspect will changing or switching i would i would like to call it switching lanes um in in my vocabulary because i use that term quite often but i love it because it it's freeing and liberating to be able to to have the the freedom to change your passion how did you what was the thought process behind it what led you to decide that after 17 years i love scrapbooking but now it's time for me to shift into art journey Yeah. So what I think it was just a natural shift because first of all, I was doing it less and less. Mm. I I wasn't working for any companies anymore. I was basically doing it for myself. And what the difference was scrapbooking was more about this, you know, memory keeping, like, you know, you're doing the chronological memory keeping, which Mm -hmm. I stopped doing a long, I mean, I stopped doing that, but I felt that the art journaling was more about myself and giving myself that freedom was scrapbooking didn't do that for me anymore. And yeah. it was a, just a natural shift. I stopped doing a lot of scrapbooking and, and was doing a lot more of the journaling or the mixed media canvases. I also do canvases, but it was more the journaling. And I realized that it fulfilled me more and mm-hmm. I have a very specific two things, actually. I want to say mixed media for me. And what I mentioned this at the beginning, like I tried, like you said, I tried acrylics. I tried uh, sculpting. And things. Um, it was very defined. Like I had to like really like, you know, like even watercoloring, you have to like be really careful. With mixed media, you have a freedom that you don't have with other art forms that if you make a mistake or if, if something is not perfect, that's okay because things are supposed to look not perfect. And that I think is where I was, where my mindset shifted because I really hated that perfectionism. I hated, I mean, things still need to look good and still need to have the composition, the balance, the color, everything. You still have to follow some kind of like art rules 
to, to make things bad, you have a little bit more leeway. You have a little bit more freedom to make mistakes. So if you start a project one way and it kind of goes another way, that's okay. Like, for example, if you're painting a flower with watercolors, you can't just go another way. You're painting a flower with watercolors. Where this, I could really go in different directions and kind of develop my style. And that's what I liked about it. Even scrapbooking kind of kept me in that same lane while mixed media art journaling or mixed media comes I could really go into like express myself like is that freedom that I didn't have before and that was really um the second thing I wanted to say and this is really important and the reason why the shift was so good is because one of the things that I that our journaling and has helped me is for in in general creativity a lot of people create for their well-being right uh and that is something that that is the reason why i create mm -hmm. um so how i create and i want to take i want to tell my how is like by doing the techniques and everything then i tell my story through art in my art journal but the the goal is to help myself in my well-being whether it is healing whether it is um and it doesn't, it's not for everybody. It could be just relaxation. You know, it could be just having fun. All those are part of your well-being and doing that, it really helps. So that's kind of where I went in that direction and what I, I do now. I, I do agree. And it's very evident in the content that you created, even the videos that you make on YouTube, it, it speaks of well-being, of of using art or art being an avenue to um, to experience that certain joy and to be able to express yourself, tell your stories. I think that's your uh, this is the first line that I've read from your about the bio that you have on on YouTube is that you want to help people to be able to tell their story through art. I remember in one of your posts, you did mention that making art, creating is like walking in a garden. I'm not sure if you can remember that, um, but it's so beautiful the way you put it out there. And when I was reading it, I was like, I, I wish that pe uh, everyone will create and make art and see art as this opportunity to be able to walk and wonder like you are in a garden, like, you know, everything is so peaceful. There's joy, you know, can you share a little bit more about that with it? You know, mindset? yeah, I think like what people have a very, that's why I, I think it goes back to what I said before, I have a very strict mindset of what art or fine art or any type of art should be. Mm -hmm. uh, some people won't even allow themselves to call themselves artists because they think that they're not an artist, right? Because yes. if I don't create a certain way, if I'm not, uh, an acrylic painter if I'm not Picasso then definitely I'm not an artist and mm -hmm. if I don't paint if I don't use acrylics or watercolors or oils then I'm not an artist well I really want to I've tried to change that mindset and mm -hmm. and I think what mixed media does for me and what I feel like I want to teach others and what I feel it does a lot of my students a lot of people that I teach is that it teaches them to um accept almost the things that cannot change, like accept that there is no perfectionism. I accept that if you're creating something and it doesn't go your way, that's okay. Or if it doesn't come out this way that you see it in like a video or in something that you wouldn't try to copy, because I actually highly, highly encourage people to copy when they're learning. And mm -hmm. I actually say it in my videos is please copy me, please copy and learn from my techniques and then make them your own. Obviously like don't copy and don't say you didn't copy and just say this is mine. <laughs> yes, That's not yes. what I'm saying because a lot of people have this really big thing with copying. But what mm -hmm. I encourage people is to say, you want to learn, you want to expand your knowledge, then you need to start somewhere, copy this and then make it your own. And I think with mixed media, what I, I, people have that freedom to do that, like to, to just like not be so stressed or strict into what they have to fit, you know, to fit into that box, because mm -hmm. there's many boxes you can fit in many things that you can, you can go that you can be in. And I, I, it really saddens me when I see people that will not even start creating because they're so afraid to make those mistakes or so afraid to um, not create because it won't come out as beautiful as so-and-so or as beautiful as they are imagining in their heads. But mm -hmm. that is the point of it is that, I mean, it takes a long time to develop a style, to develop like a skill in any skill. 
And look, it took me many years to do it for myself. But if you don't start and you don't try, even if you make the failures as what, or failures, the mistakes is what makes you get better. And then, you know, you made a mistake in something that you, where you put one material and it didn't work out well, then yeah. you go and just next time, don't do that. And just put a different, <laughs> go follow a different video, right? So there's lots of different um, options and it's not as strict as regular, like, you know, like what they call regular art, which is, you know, watercoloring and painting and so forth. So. Thanks, Garrett. I'd like to pick up on what you said that, it, that you have so much freedom when when doing mixed media and art journaling, right? And you're absolutely right. When people, even the word artist, a lot of people would cringe or would, you know, they don't want to refer to themselves as an artist because they believe that there is this you know, very rigid and very strict definition of what an of what an artist should be or what is supposed to be like the, the descriptions and attributes that you need to have. You did mention earlier that, you know, it's it's more liberating because uh, there's more room to work around with the materials that you have. For you, when you st- to made that when you made that shift to do art journaling, did you follow a certain structure? Because I know you, you mentioned that it should still look good in a way that there is still balance in composition of co- and, and colors and all that. But for someone who is would want to start doing mixed media and art journaling, what would be let's say your basic pieces of advice that for for anyone who would like to kick off their journey um because the i personally my fear is that and this way this would be what, what you mentioned earlier that do not be afraid to make mistakes because it's part of the journey and that's how you learn but it's so easy to get out of that mindset that i don't want to ruin my scrap my, my let's say my you know my scrapbook not scrapbook my journal my or, um, yeah the art journal i don't want to ruin it because you know the paper is so nice and the book is so nice and so how do i start do i use uh, like sheets of paper first or do i use pastel or any kind of colors and mediums how how do you do it karen so my advice I always give is experiment, experiment, experiment. Mm-hmm. And I say this a lot. Like you can't, if you want to learn, you have to try different things. Like that's how I learned. I mm-hmm. was experimenting and mixing different different uh, materials together in a book. And actually the thing is that our journaling, it's exactly, part of our journaling is exactly that. You have a little book. You have a little book and it's empty and you're experimenting on this book. Yeah. Well, what do you think happens if you make a mistake here and it's really horrible? Well, it's what still going to be do? hard. It, normally, at, an, at the onset, I would either tear it and then okay. you know, th- throw it or scrap it. But you could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could burn it if you want to, but no, you turn the page and you start again. And then you do it a new one and you experiment. Oh, that didn't work. Let me experiment yeah. the next one. Let's see if I put models. So I actually have videos on my channel where I, I start. Okay. And I, I try it fi- five different formulas. So for example, I put gesso first, then modeling paste, then color. Then I do modeling first for uh, modeling paste first, then gesso, then color. And then I put, I put color first, then model. Mm-hmm. Like I literally do. So I basically just experiment many Mm -hmm. different ways. There's been many different times. And I'll say this, even in this journal that I did here, I think it was this one. Let me just check. And maybe, no, I don't know. It wasn't this one. No, no, it was a different one. There's been many different times where I've actually not finished a page. I left Mm it, I left it unfinished, like not, not, it doesn't look nice, but it's part of the journey. So when I'm flipping through my art journal, when I'm actually flipping through it, because I do that a lot, uh, because I like to see where my journey, where it started and where it began. And I work on different journals all the time. So my journey is not chronological at all. Like I'll start this one and I'll go into this one. So I don't have it chronological in the sense of- That's very interesting. That's very interesting uh, in a way that it, you know, you can, you can yeah. stop and then start a new one and then you can go back. And well, then... I like the different sizes. So like sometimes I'm inspired, depends on the inspiration. Sometimes uh-huh. certain, certain things, I don't want to work on a big journal. I don't have time. Like, yeah. so for example, like at this size, like this is tiny. So it's great yeah. because like, if I don't have a lot of time, I can just quickly, you know, do something fun and quick as yeah. opposed to something bigger, right? So so it doesn't really go in a chronological order for me, but 
I love looking at how I develop, how my journey, how I expand, uh, not expand, how I experimented, and what happened, like what I tried, what I did, what worked, what didn't work. And that is part of the journey. And you will notice as the more you experiment, the more you practice, the more you do, as with anything, yeah. you will notice, first of all, what are your favorite techniques and mm-hmm. what you what you resonate with, the most colors you resonate with, the most certain um, patterns, certain designs. Like I always resonate with butterflies and birds. So they're a very common theme in my art journals. Uh, Trees are a very common theme in my art journals, but for you might be something else. Some people like do a lot of circles, connect with animals, you know, so it becomes your own. It becomes something that is just yours, that is not for anybody else. And that you can actually look at. Some people put dates on their journals. I don't do it. I always forget. But so that way you actually know when you made it because sometimes this journal like took me like a couple of years to make, right? There's so many pages in it. So, so, because I don't work, as I said, in the same one. So my advice going back to your question is that what, what's the worst that can happen? You just turn the page or you rip it. Absolutely right. You know, you can just turn a page and it's, it's going to be part of your journey. I was just looking at the, the cover of that art journal that says art story. And yeah. it's so fitting. Um, did you, you said that it took you like it's a year to, to complete. Is, is that right? Well, not Seriously. years. So I, do, I don't actually, I, I don't know because I don't know when the initial date was. Uh-huh. Uh, but I want to say a couple of years because I remember when I did this ver- this journal, I think was at the beginning of this one. I think it was at the beginning of COVID. So oh. 2020, I would say. So, yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. I, and, but some, I wouldn't always, as I said, I don't always work with the same journal. But sometimes I go into the little ones and I just finished my last page um, just a few weeks ago. So yeah, mm-hmm. but there was a huge gaps in between them, right? Because yes. uh, I just went to something else. And then, so at the end, I, what I do is I do a video where I flip, through all of them so not only am i following that uh journey but other people can view it as well so love it yeah and i'm sure our, our for, for those who are listening to us right now I'm sure they're pretty curious of how do you fill out the pages i mean what do you what do you put in there uh materials that you use you are interested to learn more about i'm sure you guys are curious to know what you can put into your art journal how do you even start what materials you need to use then please do watch out for karen's live demo which is going to be on her channel karen can you share a little bit more about that and details as to where they will find the live demo yeah so i am doing a live demo and i'm on my youtube channel which is my name karen tamir and what i want to share is just a few techniques that will Uh, kind of like a foundation, like basic techniques that can be used for art journaling or for anything. Because I forgot to say that one of the things that I like about art journaling is that you can try something. And let's say you want to do this mixed media on a bigger canvas or something else. Well, the art journaling gives you the opportunity to try these techniques on a smaller scale to get all the mistakes out to get all the kinks out because you don't want to do this whole thing on a big canvas and then make a mistake and then have to like scrap the canvas the page you can just flip that page right so so this is the art journal that i'm going to be that i'm making it's the exact techniques i'm going to be showing how to like learn how to collage like in a small scale how to use modeling paste how to use i'm using the etcher watercolors the metallic ones which are really nice i don't know if you can see the metallic here and a few other things they just create that texture because what's so beautiful with mixed media is that you can build layers upon layers and all of them kind of show so you get that 3d effect and that texture that you don't get in other art forms so that's what i'm going to be doing so i'm going to be demoing it's going to be only a half an hour and yeah and it's just showing you a few little techniques that will lead to a bigger workshop now thanks karen for for sharing that and i'm sure our audience are pretty excited to watch the demo again it's going to be on karen tamir's channel on youtube we'll definitely include that in the description box and if you really want to have the extended version here we'll have her mini workshop that is happening on august 14 we'll share the details of the mini workshop but definitely you pick up a lot everything that you heard so far 
it's going to, it's just scratching the surface. Surface, Karen will have so much more that she can teach you. So please do watch out for her mini workshop that's happening on the 14th of August. So I'll be using the Etcher accordion book, which is really cool. And while I've been talking about art journaling, how like you can tell your story through art, but in an accordion book, you can actually tell, tell almost a never ending story, which is really cool because you can just, it just continues on and on yeah. and on. So I'm starting with these four pages. So these are already made myself. I made them in um, my, and I'm going to be teaching basically the same techniques it's going to continue on into the, the accordion and so it's going to be a never-ending garden with a lot of fun like fun and ex and no without no don't say that <laughs> with a lot of techniques mixed media techniques on collaging and with textures modeling paste stencils and different and many more techniques and basically it's so easy to make it might look complicated but honestly i always say mixed media is almost like working in kindergarten you're just cutting and pasting and putting things together and and just creating your own artwork that way, but that looks professional. So we're, I'm gonna. So this is what I'm gonna be creating, and it's gonna be a live show. So I'm gonna be creating the next four pages and show people how they can continue their never-ending uh, garden or journal through this book. So that's that basically so what cool. I'm gonna be teaching. That is yeah. so cool. It looks like a storybook, and the never-ending. Um, that is really smart and witty um to be able to share it i mean to create something that's like never ending and you can just continue on your story plus it's so yeah. beautiful to look at um and honestly like people think like oh it makes media is really expensive but you can really make it like inexpensive as well like for example i'll be using like magazines and yeah. book papers and i'll be using you could use any type of watercolor or or even if you don't have modeling paste, you can make your own. Like there's really a lot of options for people to be able to create. So mm -hmm. there is so many possibilities that way. And that's what I love about what you're sharing on your YouTube channel as well. There are prompts there that I've seen wherein you said that you can absolutely make use of, let's say, materials or any art crafts that you possibly probably have that you hoarded you know several years back and you have this prompt that you would do on a you know on a Sunday night for motivational Monday and it's just so inspiring to be able to oh okay I can absolutely make use of like I don't have to buy new products in order to create and one other thing that I saw is that um the cards are little cards with like um messages that have written at the back um and it's it's all very inspirational um there are prompts there as well plus they look so pretty um so with, with that said and with the mission that you um that you are sharing with your audience i know you have a pretty engaged um youtube community um what would you what would be your golden nuggets for for our audience who are starting out in their creative journey and would want to kick off using mixed media but probably have a lot of questions as to how do I start, what materials to use, or can I even do it um, by myself? And would it look good or would I end up scrapping it? So what would be your piece of advice or golden nuggets for them, Karen? Um, my advice would be first to start uh, watching a lot of content. Like I think that really helps. Mm -hmm. That helped me, I guess. Um, so start watching content and finding certain because there's a lot of mixed media artists out there and especially with art journal you can even like you know if you go on youtube and you put art journal i mean you can look on my channel too and see what type of style resonates with you because there's different types of mixed media styles so you you can start with one and as i said take buy a book it has to, and and you need to make sure that the book is really thick so the mm -hmm. pages like you know wa like watercolor pages are great like you know you want to make sure that there are 300 to over 200 for sure over 300 is the best gsm yes. and because you want to make sure that when you're putting wet mediums it will hold and start experimenting like i said honestly experimenting is the is the best solution 
and the best tip that I can give people and start seeing what you like to use, what colors you like, use what you have at home. Don't still go and buy everything you see. I mean, it, it is very tempting. Uh, it is important to have things, basic things like gesso, modeling paste, no, sorry, not modeling paste, one, gesso, gel medium. Those are very basic art products for mixed media. Everything else you can really kind of incorporate. You can use recycled materials. You can use like acrylic paints you might have even from the dollar store. You can you can buy watercolor. I mean, you can use watercolors if you already have them. Anything you can incorporate and and just experiment. And once you do that, you're gonna find your own style through that. And the most important thing is don't stress and don't worry if you make mistakes. I really want to emphasize that it's okay. You can just turn the page. That's what the book is all about, that you can experiment to kind of get that going, to get that those techniques, to learn those techniques. And if you don't like it, as I said, just turn the page and start again, right? So that's, and watch, yeah, you have to, and copy, as I said, like copy other people's styles until you find your own, as long as you give them credit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. And one biggest takeaway is don't be afraid to turn the page. I think it's it's yes. something that really resonates with me. Um, when I said earlier that you can, you know, I would probably scrap it if I don't look good. But thank you for reminding me that it's okay to make mistakes and you can absolutely turn the page. Karen, it's been a pleasure having you here on Make My Heart. I look forward to your live demo and your mini workshop again that is happening on August 14. The live demo is on the 22nd of July. Karen, thank you for what you do, for your for sharing your talent, your gifts, and your creativity especially your golden nuggets with your community and um, we'll catch up with you again. Thank you for being part of Make More Art. Thanks, Thank Karen. you so much, Jesse. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It took Karen 17 years to make the shift. The long years of making art led her to a realization that aligns with her mission. Inspirational and truly motivating. I do hope that, like Karen, we will view art as a garden where we can walk in tranquility, at peace, and freely wander. What are your thoughts about this episode? Do share with us through the comments associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Karen.